Good morning, good afternoon, good day. I do not know what time you are watching this, but hi. Um, today I have a tutorial for you guys. Um, we are looking at totem poles, mixing it with Zentangles. So you are actually gonna be creating your own totem pole if you wish to follow along with me today. Um, today is the tutorial on um, what I'm currently doing with year eights at school. Um, it's relating to pattern and animals. So we've been looking at a lot of animals and how to represent them in different ways. And now we're adding patterns in there as well. But um, maybe if you want to get a bit creative, if you want some kind of like chill time, or maybe you're just bored, um, I don't know, this could be for you. So, what we're going to need today is our ruler, can't find anything else right now, pencil, rubber, that's not a pencil, that is a pen, <laughs> rubber, and pencil, like I was saying. So I'm using a biro because um, if you want to colour it in a little bit later, it will be a bit easier because this does not smudge. Um, however, you can use whatever pen you like. So let's talk about what we're going to look at today. We'll start off with the kind of Native American, North American influences. So you're always welcome to like Google if you want to have a little bit more inspiration. But the purpose of our art sessions is to take elements of different um, artworks and kind of smush it in together into our own versions. So the Native American work that you see is very simple. So we've got really simple lines, really simple shapes, and usually like very simple colours. Maybe just one colour mixed with black, so you might see ones that are red and black, maybe blue, red and black, green, red and black, but usually you don't really go over like three or four colours. So these pictures are usually of animals, and they're very simple, so we don't have like any tiny details on there at all. They're just really simple designs. Now today, I want you guys to pick your own animal. Um, with totem poles, normally, it, they would tell a story or um, represent certain people. You know, you used to hear like, oh, Big Bear Chief, or something like that. I don't know. Um, but maybe they represent people. So I suggest if you're doing it, then maybe you just pick an animal that you like or like your spirit animal man or something like that. I don't know. I, today, right now, I'm going to go for a cheetah because I've realised that they're just an absolutely awesome animal and definitely my favourite for right now. So I'll be starting off with a cheetah. Now let's see if I can get this camera to look at what I'm doing so you guys can see what we're doing and work along with me. Cool, right, we have our little station set up here. Um, first thing I'm going to do is using my ruler, I am going to create a box that is going to be 12 centimeters by 20. Now, we try and get this as straight as we can in the middle of our page. However, it doesn't really matter, as long as you've got a nice little box. Um, with these Native American animals that we see, they're all very, very symmetrical. Symmetrical meaning they're both exactly the same on each side. So we need to try and get the left side to look exactly like the right. So we're going to have a line of symmetry down the middle. To make it a bit easier for us, we're going to put that line of symmetry in there. So I'm going to make a little mark at the six. Make a little mark at the six down here. And we've got a line. Let's make sure we're using our pencil very lightly. There's no point in pressing down really, really hard because we want to just rub it out at the end anyway. Okay, so now I have my box. That's a little bit wonky on my page, I think, but we're cool, we're cool. I've got a line down the middle. Where with the animals that we're looking at, we really want to simplify down the shapes. So that is you choosing um, what are the most important features that you want to represent and just kind of going with it. Um, if you look at the eyes, they're all very simple. They're all very weird and wonderful. Um, but we have very organic shapes, okay? So we don't really want to see loads of like straight lines and like <laughs> and pointy edges and uh, corners and things like that. We want to have organic shapes, which is really flowing lines, really curved shapes. Um, and you guys can give it a little go. Okay, so the aim of doing your box 12 centimeters by 20 centimeters is that you or someone else in your family, maybe with your friend, maybe you're just going to do a few more, um, can actually stack 
the elements of the totem pole together um, with it looking really neat. So you're actually only going to do one section of a totem pole and then maybe stack them together at the end. Okay, so if I'm starting off with my cheetah, I'm going to start off with some eyes. Now what I have here are some very feline looking eyes. If I do one this side, I'm going to try and do it pretty much exactly the same the next side. Now, if it's not exactly the same, we're not going to panic about it. Um, can you even imagine trying to um, carve, carve totem poles out of wood back in the day? Like... No, it's never going to be absolutely amazing. It's never going to be absolutely perfect. Well, they were amazing, but they're not absolutely perfect. So I am going for it. My cheer is smiling. We are looking good. Okay, I kind of have a basis of eyes, nose, mouth. Good. Now I can kind of add on the details of my cheetah around the patterns that I've got. The organic shapes we want to complement our animal, so whether you're going to do a monkey, a panda, an uh, elephant or something, we want these organic shapes to kind of look like they belong, not just to be plonked on going like any old way. Think about which way the fur is going. Think about what your animal looks like. With this box, this is where your totem pole is going to be, this is what it's based around. Okay, but you can go over the edges as long as the corners keep the same size. I could, let's say, do my cheetah ear coming up here because it's going to go over onto the next totem pole. So the one that gets stacked on top of it. So with this, it's not cartoon like, it's just really simplistic. I think maybe that nose is not good. I think. Um, I just did a panda one to show you guys in a little bit. Yeah, I like that. Please go and search like some sort of totem poles because um, even though they're all animals, sometimes they don't really look like the animals they're looking like. So as long as like a beaver has big teeth, etc. I'm going with the fact that my cheetah has these bits that are going to be black then I know she is going to be quality. After this, we're adding in a few more shapes. Um, organic shapes, remember? So we kind of like these bendy lines. So just like we've got there, we've got, um, they're not just lines, they're full shapes. And that's really quite important for in a little bit because we're going to start like colouring it in together. So, I have my basic shape for my teacher slash tiger slash maybe it's just a new animal I'm going to make up, you know, I don't care. So I have my basis of that. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to outline it in biro, okay? So just go over all those outlines, really nice, smooth biro, no feathering. I don't want to see like, I want to see a nice, clean line, okay? Just go around it all. Da, 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 da. So, I outlined everything in biro and then actually rubbed some bits out with the rubber. With your pen, go over and colour in the sections that are completely black. So, let's say some places around the eyes and maybe the nostrils, not the nose, but like the nostrils. Um, that might just be it, to be honest with you. Uh, we can always come back to this a little bit later. So, now in a second, we're going to start adding our Zen Tangle. You can also Google some Zentangles if you want some uh, inspiration of what kind of patterns to do. But Zentangles essentially is creating patterns and putting them somewhere. Um, you are thinking about it, so it's, it's kind of like doodling. Doodling kind of means you're bored and you're just doing it for the sake of it. Zentangles are being mindful and selective about what you're doing and where you're putting it. So what I've been saying to the kids at school is when we're doing uh, Zentangles, especially for animals, we're still thinking about which way the fur is going, um, which way like certain shapes are going. So you're putting the patterns on those shapes to complement the animal. Oops, it is easy <laughs> Exciting. Uh, to complement the animal rather than just like for the sake of it, like, oh, this is a pattern going here. Yeah? 
we're now using our Zen Tangles to depict tone within our image. So the darker bits, I want to make them look darker, but instead of just colouring them in, I'm going to add uh, little patterns. Remember as well, we are doing symmetrical, so everything I do on one side, I want to do on the other side. I don't want to see two similar patterns all over like a massive area, so you do need to kind of change it up a little bit. But really take your time and just um, ease into it, like enjoy it. The point of this is that the Zentangles work invented, kind of created to um, make you relax more, make you just think and like take time. Um, it's a good form of meditation. You see these colouring books these days that's kind of derived from the same kind of thing that you want it, people to relax. It's a good kind of therapy. So use this. You've made your own kind of colouring book now. Sometimes it reminds me of... Um, what are they called? Where the ladies get them all up their hands. Uh, henna. I'm going to carry on with this. And I'm going to show you the end result in a minute. So I'm pretty much nearly there. I'm nearly finished. I cannot really get over how messy this is. So I do apologise. <laughs> but it's just got a lot of, like black splodges and things. So be careful with your biro guys. Um, and don't get it all over your hands. Where it's darker, like I said, on the nose, we want to get our pen marks really nice and close together. And then on the whiter bits, the lighter areas, you don't really need to do that much at all. And I've gone over some darker sections as well by outlining things. Here's another one that I did earlier, probably a little bit more crisp. I added a few bamboo shoots to my panda as well because it looked a bit bare at the back. Uh, also, they kind of got a little bit lost, so I think it works a bit better when I outlined them even more. The last thing you guys are going to do is cut them out. I mean, if you want to, um, if you want to do like a colour wash, so you could just get a, um, some watercolour paints, water them down and just do a one colour like wash all over your, all the way over your picture. And you can do you could do like a red one and then a blue one and like all different colors for each animal but um after that if you want to do that you can cut them out so i'm going to cut mine out now and i'll show you the finished product in just a sec so here we go these are my two animals i'm holding them in place because i do not have any blue tack in my house but you guys can stick them together, put them on the walls. Maybe you're just doing one for my year eight, so you're just going to bring in your one, and we're going to put that all around my room. Make a nice totem pole for everyone. I may photocopy ours onto coloured paper, because that'll be nice and exciting. But yeah, I'm quite excited to see what you guys come out with. I have my panda, and we have my cheetah tiger, whatever you want to call it. They will literally just swap together. That's why it's important they're the same size. Show me what you come out with a little bit later. Hopefully I haven't spoken too much. As per. But um, good luck guys. Stay safe out there. And have a good day you beautiful humans. Bye.